I'm checking and testing, checking, testing, checking, testing, checking, testing. Hi, this is Michelle with Life After Choice. We'll take it in small bites. Before we get started today, I just want to show you my new t-shirt. This is a small selection of some of the foundlings that I've been creating on a daily basis. Some of you already know about the foundlings project. Well, this says giving a face to the faceless. This is a way of speaking to people about the lives that are lost in abortion. If this is something that you would love to have, then just go to our store. You can have it on a mug or on a tote bag or on a t-shirt. Okay, well, let's get started. I didn't come to know Jesus until I was 48 years old. By that time, I had really become very tired of myself. I knew my way around me like nobody's business. And frankly, I was a little disappointed, kind of like that song, is that all there is? Is that all there is to life? I couldn't find anything that was going any deeper than just me. I was so sick of self. I was sick of me. Let me tell you how it felt. It felt like I lived in an airport and I knew my way around every conveyor belt, every escalator, every walkway, every food court, but I could never get out. I could look out the window, but I couldn't get on the airplane and go anywhere. I couldn't go home and always carrying around this baggage, life baggage. I couldn't drop it off anywhere. I couldn't be rid of it. The great joy that I discovered when I gave my life to Jesus or Yeshua was that all of a sudden I was able to leave the airport. I was able to fly to high heights. I was able to go home and home was with God. God has always wanted to dwell closely with his people. He dwelled with the Israelites in the desert as a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. He met with Israel at the mercy seat in the tabernacle like we talked about for the Day of Atonement. And finally, he became one of us so that he could be with us in the most intimate way. He became incarnate, the Word made flesh, Jesus himself. Well, we are in the midst of the seventh of seven feasts during these high holy days, these autumn months of 2020. We're experiencing the Feast of Tabernacles, which represents the time that is to come that we look forward to with great hopefulness in our future when we will dwell with God forever. In Hebrew, this seventh feast is called Sukkot. Sukkot is the plural of the word sukkah, and the sukkah is a temporary dwelling. During this feast, the Jewish people filled these wonderful temporary booths or tabernacles or little sheds that you can see the sky through the roof and we dwell in them as a way of remembering God's provision in the wilderness when we were wandering for 40 years. What does it mean that this Feast of Tabernacles that we're celebrating right now is the seventh of seven feasts taking place in the seventh month of the Hebrew calendar? What does that word Shiva in Hebrew, seven, mean? It means a vow, or we might say a promise fulfilled. And that really gives us insight into this feast, because what it is, is it's the final culmination, the fulfillment of the promise of the whole story of all seven feasts. They all tell a story, when put together, of the redemption of humanity by God. And it ends in the fulfillment, which is that sin has been put away, God's wrath has been appeased, Jesus has done the work on the cross, to take away our sins, and we are able to dwell eternally with God. God created the world in seven days. But one thing that's interesting as you read Genesis 1 and 2 is you notice that that seventh day has never come to a close. All the other days have closure to them in Genesis 1. God says there was evening and there was morning the second day or the third day, the sixth day. But there's no such closure on the seventh day. We are in that seventh day even now, thousands of years after Moses wrote those words. 
at the prophetic fulfillment of the Feast of Tabernacles, that seventh day has come to a close and we have entered into a new week, a time of rest for God's people. Let me read you from Hebrews 4, which tells us a lot about the rest that God has in store for us. So there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For the one who has entered his rest has himself also rested from his works, as God did from his. Therefore, let us be diligent to enter that rest. The Feast of Tabernacles pictures the Sabbath rest for the people of God. For our closing prayer today, I'd like to read from a psalm that's frequently read at this time of year. Psalm 118. I'm going to read verses 21 through 26. And let's treat that as our closing prayer. I shall give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. That stone is Jesus. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O oh Lord, do save. We beseech you. O oh Lord, we beseech you. Do send prosperity. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Let's say that together in Hebrew. Cry out to the Lord. Baruch haba b'shem Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. If you're walking around that airport carrying the baggage that includes your abortion, other regrets, things that are causing you shame, causing you grief, that you can't quit carrying them around, please consider giving them to Jesus to carry. Because remember, it says here, this is the Lord's doing. What Jesus did is marvelous in our eyes. It's not something that we can do, but he did it for us. He made a way for you to be free of your sins and to get out of that airport and fly into the sky to the highest heights to meet with God and see the face of God. Just as we can see through the roof of the sukkah and perceive the sky beyond, so you are invited to look up and perceive the heavenly face of God and dwell in his perfect rest forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Please subscribe and like and share and all those good things on social media so that we can grow and continue to bring you this material. See you next time.